Hello and welcome back to Ready Steady DIY. If it's your first time here, thank you for joining us. So today I got a day off and I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna make a pinhole video camera and see how I do. With a pinhole camera, you can create some amazingly different images. Yes, they're a little bit softer. Yes, they're a little bit grainy, but they can look hauntingly beautiful. And they're definitely different than the kind of images I make at work every day. So today I think I'm gonna give it a go. I've used professionally made pinhole adapters before, so I sorta of know what I'm doing, but I've never built one myself. You are about to witness my first kick at the can. So let's see what I can do with my day off. Let's get started. <laughs> So the sensor of your camera looking out of a lens is a lot like you looking out of a window. All of the light that is reflected off of the objects outside of your window bounces back in through your window and you see those objects. Same thing with a sensor in a camera or a film plane in a camera. Light bounces off of all the objects that you point the lens at. That light reflects back through the lens, onto the film plane or onto the sensor, and an image is born. Hopefully, a good one. But in the same way, you could just open up your window and look out at those objects clean in order to see the light that's bouncing off of all the objects in your backyard or whatever you're looking at. In the same way, a camera can do that too. It doesn't need the lens there in order to create an image. It needs the lens there in order to create what I guess we would call a professional image, but you can still create an image just by opening up the window, so to speak. So with a digital camera, we would do that potentially by just removing the lens and leaving the port cap off. The port cap is the cap that protects the camera body when there's no lens on it. But as you can see, if I just take the lens right off the camera here and let the sensor of the camera see all the light bouncing off of all the objects in front of it, the image is a little overexposed. <laughs> it's a little bit too much light. The hole is just way too big in order for the sensor to create an image while looking out of it. It's seeing all the light, it's just seeing way too much. We need to create a way that we can limit and control the amount of light that gets through to the sensor so that it creates an image. So in order to do that, we're gonna put a pinhole in the port cap of the camera body. That way the hole is in exactly the right spot, right in front of the sensor, and hopefully when I do it, we'll get an image. So typically what happens is people make a hole in the port cap of their camera and then fill the hole in with some foil or a piece of aluminum, something like that, and then make their pinhole in the foil. A lot of people question that. Why not just drill a hole in the port cap? Well, first, it's going to be pretty hard to do and keep it tiny. If you just tried to poke a hole through that thick ABS plastic, chances are it's not going to be straight. It might not be round. The kind of drill bit you would need, even if you got the smallest drill bit you could find, you'd probably make a hole that was too big. Also, the thickness of the material affects how much light gets through that hole. So in this case, I'm going to drill a hole in the port cap and then I'm going to replace that hole with a piece of black foil or what in the film and television industry we call black wrap which is really just blackened, thicker than normal tinfoil. This was a material that we used a lot to control lights back when lights used to be hot, before the LED days. It gets used a lot less these days, but it's still really useful if you happen to be using hot tungsten lighting. In this case, I'm gonna use it to make my pinhole, and the reason I'm using it is because it's black. One big problem any lens has, pinhole or otherwise, is internal reflections. Once the light enters the camera body, it'll hit the sensor and it can kick back or it'll hit other things in that area and kick around. That can cause internal flaring and image degradation. If you put a big shiny piece of foil facing inwards into your camera, you're just asking for reflective problems. So I'm gonna guess probably most of you don't have black wrap at home, but you do have probably a Sharpie and some tin foil. Get some thicker tin foil. I think thicker is better so you don't rip it. Try to make the inside black somehow. And remember, it's gonna be on the inside of your camera so it can't be something that's gonna flake off and end up on the sensor. That's one thing you gotta be really careful of. This is fun. It should be cheap. You don't wanna destroy your camera. So you wanna be really careful that whatever you do when you're drilling, do it away from the camera. When you're finished, that you've wiped off everything or filed everything down, you're you're not gonna get shards of aluminum or shards of plastic inside your camera. You really don't want that. Just be careful, use common sense, and hopefully everything turns out awesome. So I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a big hole, I'm gonna put a piece of black wrap in it, and then inside that black wrap, I'm gonna poke my tiny little pinhole, and hopefully it's gonna be perfect. But as with anything with imaging, we have to be really precise. How big of a pinhole do I need to make? Since we're using the port cap for this experiment, you figure that out by figuring out what kind of flange focal depth your camera has. Every maker has a slightly different flange focal depth. It's measured in millimeters. It's basically the distance from the point at which the lens locks onto the camera body from that point all the way to the sensor. That distance is called the flange focal distance. I'm gonna be doing these with Canon EOS cameras. I have three of them sitting around. They're actually a really 
really good make to use for this kind of modification because the Canon EF flange focal distance is 44 millimeters. That's a lot more depth than a lot of other camera makers. A deeper flange focal depth means I can screw this up a little bit and still not get caught. That is to say, I want my hole to be about 1 one hundredth of the flange focal depth of the camera I'm using. In this case, a deeper flange focal depth means I can make a bigger hole. And it's a lot easier to make a bigger hole than it is a smaller hole. I mean, keep in mind we're talking about pinholes here. They're all pretty small. But in this case, I want my pinhole to be 1 one hundredth of 44 millimeters or 0.44 millimeters in diameter. That seems doable to me. I went through my tools. I looked at a bunch of things. First of all, you're not going to use something like an awl. <laughs> that is just way too big. Onto the Swiss Army knife, which includes a pin. You might think making a pinhole with a Swiss Army knife pin is the smartest idea you'll ever have, but the Swiss Army knife pin is pretty thick. It's too thick to make a hole even close to 0.44 millimeters. I'm going through all my sewing needles. I got a lot of them. I love to sew. None of them are working for me. They're all too thick. Finally, I go to my pins that I use for pinning sewing when I'm working. I check it with my calipers and it's a little better. It's not quite 0.44 millimeters, but I'm gonna live with it. A bigger hole means more light's gonna get through. It means my pinhole camera will be a little bit more light sensitive. That means a lot, particularly to video images. And those are the kind of images I think I'd like to create here. So a slightly larger hole might work for me. So I'm gonna go with this pin. And basically then it's pretty easy. I, I break up my cheap old drill press. I put my stepping bit into it. I drill a hole that looks like, I don't know, five eighths of an inch or maybe a little bit bigger. It doesn't particularly matter which step I stop at because all of these holes are gonna be bigger than the pinhole itself. But I do wanna have a pretty solid connection between the foil and the port cap. I'm gonna use tape to tape it on. But the bigger the hole means the bigger the piece of foil, which means more likely that I'm not gonna screw it up. <laughs> So I drill my hole and I think it's gonna be easier to put the pinhole in the foil before I attach it because I wanna make sure that I don't leave little burrs on the inside, like the opposite side of the needle. Cause when you poke through something metal, obviously some of the material that you're removing to create the hole is just gonna bend back into the back of the piece of foil. So if that happens, you can mitigate against that by spinning your needle a little bit and sort of drilling into it. That way you're removing material more by drilling, less by poking, I guess. If there's a burr or two on the other side, I think a little bit of 2000 grit sandpaper or something mild would be appropriate. And once I think I've got my hole just right, I'm gonna tape it down to the inside of that port cap, stick the port cap on and see what I get. Wow. <laughs> it's like, the most beautiful scene in Blair Witch Project ever. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm gonna show this to a client or not. I might, I mean, I don't know, it depends. A music video maybe, I don't know. But it sure looks cool. It, it, it looks a lot like Super 8 film. I used to shoot a lot of Super 8 film. It looks kind of like that, kind of grainy and contrasty. And I really like this image. It's kind of eerie. <laughs> But because I'm doing this myself, I haven't ordered it off Amazon, which you can do. I haven't ordered it off eBay, which you can also do. I get to play around with it. Since I figured out what the poker should be, I can poke holes endlessly here. Why don't we try a double pinhole camera? See how that looks. Hmm. Two suns. Oh my God, if you shot a rainbow, you'd have a double rainbow. <laughs> how about a triple pinhole camera? <laughs> okay, so this has been pretty fun. I'm not sure if I'm gonna bring this to work or not. I might just use it as sort of amusement, but it was a pretty interesting way to use some stuff that was lying around I wasn't otherwise using. And you never know when you make pictures for a living when a little gag like this might just come in handy. So I hope that helped you out. If it did, please feel free to like or subscribe. It means the world to a channel. If you could like or subscribe a video, it really, really helps. It's not just a story. But even if you don't like or subscribe, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Like I say every week, comments help me make the channel better, and that's what I'm after. So until next week, take care, stay safe, have fun with your DIY projects, whatever they are, and I'll see you next Saturday.